What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to do something a little different. Now, if you're international and say you can't buy these ETFs, do not worry because you're going to see some stocks that might interest you. You're gonna see some, maybe some stocks you don't know about and you could explore those stocks as possible individual holdings for your portfolio. So I'm gonna do a comparison today. Goldman Sachs has a brand new ETF. It came out not too long ago and they try to compare it. It's actively managed. They try to compare it to ARK. So ARK ETF, specifically ARKK. And what it does is it tries to take that technology, right? The disruptive innovation, disruptive technology, and tries to invest in those companies, actively manage, and tries to bring you the most returns, similar to how Kathy Wood and her team does at ARK. So I'm gonna do a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison today of GTEC and ARK, ARKK, and show you all the holdings inside and give you some opinions on which one I think is better. You're gonna wanna see this one, stay tuned. All right, guys, let's have some fun today. The last video I did was on Blend Labs. It was a very serious video. It was a long video. I've got the Twitter birds back out. You know what that means. Follow me on Twitter, at Fired Up Wealth. We just broke like 1,200 followers, which I know we can we can do a lot better. We're over 20,200 subscribers on YouTube. Let's see if we can get that Twitter count a little bit higher. So follow on Twitter. We're also on other platforms as well. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little bell to get notifications. Let's get right into it. I'm going to turn these birds off first. Okay, so Goldman Sachs, this is it. Goldman Sachs Future Tech Leaders Equity ETF. Now you can see the inception date was 9-14-2021. It's down 4.43% since it started. It's pretty new. Let's look, I wanna look really at the holdings and look at the fees and compare this to ARK. Both are actively managed. They're trying to say, Goldman Sachs is saying that they can do better than Kathy Wood. As an investor, I really wanna see what's under the hood and you probably do too if you haven't looked. So let's look at the individual holdings. So you can see guys, expense ratio, 0.75%, very similar to ARC. I'll show you ARCs as well later. Now this pinwheel here is gonna show 24.5% of the portfolio. I do have a spreadsheet that shows you all the holdings and I'll get to that in a second. So Marvel Technology, if you remember, this is one of my top stocks to buy. Back in November of 2020, I called Marvell Technology one of my top five stocks to buy for 2021 and beyond. And the thing is actually up quite a bit, I believe 75% or something since I bought the stock. So it's done pretty well, especially for an older stock. And you can see it's got things like Mercado Libre, Workday, HubSpot, some really good companies, but an interesting blend of some mature growth, some hyper growth, some older stocks, very different. A lot of these names, in fact, most of the names you see on here, you're not going to see on ARK. Let's look at the entire portfolio of this Goldman Sachs GTEC ETF. Actually, before we do that, guys, so let's look at the regional allocation. I think this is it's pretty cool, actually, because it is a little bit more international maybe than you might expect. North America is 63.5%. So Asia, excluding Japan, is 23.5%. If you include Japan, that's another 5.5%. You've got some Europe in there, 3.9, and a couple others in there you can see. So here are the country weights. Again, US, 63.5%. Taiwan, 10.7%. China is 7.8%. Japan, 5.5%. Netherlands is in there at 2.1%. And you can see the ones below that. Russia, Australia, Korea, Singapore, Spain, and so on. So let's take a look at the entire list. It's 73% information technology. No shocker there, considering it's the Goldman Sachs future tech leaders. You would expect maybe even more, you know, information technology than 73%. Communication services, though, is 14.6, and that is kind of part of technology, but in that separate bucket as the last couple of years. And so you look at consumer discretionary, industrials, it's mostly technology. It has a few other sector weights in there, but they're very small. <laughs> You might actually be surprised at some of the names you've seen here. Some are actually really surprising, others not so much. You can see the weighting here on the side, number of shares. Really look at the ticker. The description is just gonna be the, the name of the company, of course. So Aiden, this is an alphabetical order, but Aiden, 2.08% weight, okay? You've got App Lovin' in there, 1.32. You've got Aptiv. I did a video back in 2019. That's really involved when you think of autonomous driving. So that actually is an interesting company. Um, it's not really a hyper growth type stock though. 1.6%, this AS Media Technology, I'm not familiar with. With. You've got team in here at 1.7%. You know, you've got bill. Bill.com is in here, 1.76%. C3AI, it's not a big position, 0.23, but that's in there. You've got Cadence Designs, 1.62%. You can see some other names you might not be familiar with, like CLNX. 
you've got Cognizant. I mean, Cognizant is, you know, it's a technology solutions court, but when I think of Cognizant, I think of the consulting practice. I used to partner with them a lot uh, in my previous life when I used to sell SaaS software. Datadog, that's a pick I really like, you know, 1.6%. Delta Electronics is in there. So you got DLO, a lot of people are really into that stock right now, 1.24%. Electronic Arts, you know, that's that hasn't been a great performer. So I don't, I don't really love that in there, right? 1.46%. I've got uh, Etsy. I, I like that one, 1.49%. Expedia. I, I actually like Expedia a lot. Um, you look at Expedia. It's one that I, I think will do really well. You know, Airbnb is the one I own, but I do like Expedia as well. And you think of VRBO or Verbo, they call it that app. I think it's a pretty significant competitor to AB, Airbnb. So uh, you look at global payments is in here. Five service, you get some FinTech. Yeah, HubSpot is 2.38%. Uh, match group is 1.9%. Marvel Technologies is 3.41%. So they're very bullish on that. I'm bullish on it too, but I was bullish on it, you know, 75% lower. I mean, that's good for me, I guess. I own a nice position in Marvel Technology, but I'm surprised to see that in this, you know, actively managed hyper growth type ETF being 3.4%. We'll see what happens with that. You know, Motorola, I, I mean, I get why it's in there. I don't love it. You know, NetEase is in there. Um, you know, chi Chinese, you've got Odka, you've got NXP Semiconductors, you know, some of these stocks I own and I really like. Paylocity is one that I own right now. Um, On Semiconductor, that's a good one. You got PAGs in there. You've got XM. Ring Central, which, you know, I think is they probably bought that just because it was beaten down pretty hard with that whole Zoom 5.9 announcement. Snowflake, I like this one a lot, 2.17%. You know, you've got a lot of names in here, though, like Tokyo Electron. I'm not familiar with it. Twilio, one I own. You know, Twitter's in here. UiPath, another one I'm bullish on. United Microelectron. You get some smaller ones in here, too. Some of these are really small. Zscaler's 0.78%. You've got Yandex. you got Workday. Wolfspeed. You can see everything on your screen here. Some of these... You probably don't know. C Limited's up here. That's a good one. Snap. C Limited is 1.6%. Uh, Snowflakes, 2.7%. We got Splunk in there at 1.7%. I no longer own that one. But yeah, I mean, you look at it, there's some really good names. There's some ones that I kind of scratch my head. And then there's others that I don't really know a lot about. And there's a few that I just don't like at all. So that's the group. That's the entire portfolio. The Goldman Sachs Future Tech Leaders Equity ETF. It's actively managed. 0.75% expense ratio. Ticker is GT. E K. Now let's look at ARK, A-R-K-K, -K, and see what the differences are. So as of 10-20, 2021, they update this every single day. I love the transparency. So Tesla, we didn't see Tesla in the last one. Tesla is actually almost 10% still of ARKK. It's 9.92%. You can see Teladoc, 6.2%. That thing has been absolutely demolished over the last year. Coinbase has really taken off over the last couple of, of days, couple of weeks. Roku, so Coinbase is 6.17%. Roku, 5.7%. So, so far, the top four, we didn't see at all on the other one, right? Unity Software, 5.2%. 5, 5 Zoom Video, 4.45. Now, did we see Zoom Video in the last one? I think we saw Ring Central, but did we see Zoom Video? Let me, let me just take a look. I mean, these are in alphabetical order, so you can see Zscaler here. They do not have Zoom Video, but they do, they do have Ring Central. Do they have Unity in here? Okay, so they don't have Unity and they don't have Zoom, okay? You can see over here in Arc, they've got Unity and Zoom. So now we're at the top, what, six? Top seven, Square, I didn't see Square in there. You know, Spotify, these are very, very different. The way I would actually look at, if I, just off first glance, the way I look at it is that GTEC is almost like a, a safer, more mature version of Arc, if that makes any sense. It'd be like if you compare WCLD and Sky, S-K-Y-Y, like Sky is still cloud computing, but it's like, it includes a lot of the mature growth in there and some kind of lesser known names and, and not as hyper growth. Whereas the WCLD is gonna focus more on those smaller, you know, mid cap type businesses that are more in the hyper growth type mode. So these are very different. In fact, when you look at it, there's not much crossover really at all. You know, we've got Spotify, we've got Shopify, we've got Twilio. So Twilio is, is the first one I recognize that actually overlapped. Exact Sciences, UiPath, I think UiPath overlaps. Zillow Group is in here, and Arc, CRISPR. This has a much more blend too, I think, with the, the genomics part of it too. So the ARKK takes the best of breed from all the other ETFs. So there's like the ARCW, there's the 
arc G, there's arc F. So FinTech, all these different plays, all these different um, secular growth trends and puts it into one kind of what they call best of breed, taking all those secular growth trends and, and put them into one ETF. That's the goal of ARKK. You know, if you want to just focus on genomics, there's the G, FinTech, there's an F. You know, W is the next gen internet and so on. You've got NTLA, you've got Palantir, DraftKings, Twitter. We saw Twitter on both, I believe. Beam Therapeutics, NVTA, Fate Therapeutics, 10X Genomics, DocuSign, DNA, which is which is Ginkgo Bioworks. You got PagerDuty and you got IRDM. And there's some more here. So you got True Simple, Pacific Biosciences, you got Robinhood, you got Twist Bioscience. You've got, you can see the rest of them. I won't read them all, but Stratasys skills. And there's some stocks in here that I don't like, and maybe you don't like either. And I've said this before to the gang, you know, when you're trying to play a secular growth theme, like a thematic ETF, there's going to be good and bad stocks. You're just really betting that that whole bucket's going to be worth more over time. If you really want to play it the best, and like, if you can't buy these ETFs, if you're watching this, you have to look at the names on here and say, well, what is this one about? It seems interesting. Go do some due diligence on some of the stocks that catch your eye. Maybe you don't know anything about the businesses. And sometimes that's a good way for you to find the next big winner in your portfolio. So just because you can't buy the ETF, I think it's important to kind of look at some different ETFs to see what these guys are buying. And maybe it'll give you some ideas for you to explore on your own. If you look at the expense ratio, guys, So the expense ratio is 0.75%. It's exactly the same as the GTEC. Now the inception date on this though, on ARKK is actually October 31st, 2014. So if you look at that, we're actually coming up on their seven year anniversary for ARKK. So, and you, if you look at the asset center management, they're gonna have a lot more asset center management. So net assets, we got 19.402, that's in millions, right? So $19.4 billion assets under management for ARKK. GTEC right here, net assets, 213.79 million. So this is quite a bit smaller when you think of, you know, it's newer, of course. So it's pretty tiny still in comparison. Now, of course, we don't have any historical data to really know which one's gonna perform better. I mean, ARK, ARKK has outperformed pretty much everything over a five year period. It's had a bad year. GTEC's brand new, it's down about 5% since they started it. You know, it's really hard to say. If I were to pick one of those, I mean, I probably would go with ARKK just because I know these companies better. I have more conviction in them, but I don't think that GTEK is a bad ETF by any means. And it could be a way to blend out and balance a portfolio with maybe a little bit more mainstream and some more uh, mature names. That's kind of the best way I could put it for you guys. When you look at GTEK, it's gonna give you the more well-known names, the larger cap names. It's also gonna give you a little bit of uh, maybe stability with some of those older type businesses and things like that, but it should give you less hyper growth. ARKK is kind of swinging for the fence, fences on most of their picks and GTEC's kind of a balance between the two. And again, the best way I can put it is comparing WCLD to Sky, S-K-Y-Y. They're both trying to, to give you those returns in cloud growth, but one is very much hyper growth with WCLD and the Sky is, is much more of a balance that has a mix of some of those smaller companies as well as those older type companies like Oracle and things like that in that Sky ETF. So GTEC's approach, we draw on a deep bench of 80 plus experienced investors around the world conducting active bottom up security selection with a strong valuation discipline to identify our highest conviction technology investment ideas globally across both developed and emerging markets. So when you look at this, these are more high conviction stock picks and ARKK is maybe a little bit more speculative. You know, ARK might have high conviction, but the, the majority of people on the planet are going to call a lot of the stocks that are in the ARK. KK more speculative. So it's really the best way I can put it again is one's kind of a more mature approach, so to speak, and maybe give you less returns with GTEC, but also might give you a little bit more security. So for the right person, GTEC could be a much better investment. When you're looking just at gains over the next five or 10 years, I would probably put my money on ARKK, but you know, sleeping well at night's important too. So some people might look at GTEC and say, I trust Goldman Sachs a lot more. I like these, these companies a lot more. It's a more disciplined approach, higher conviction, um, less risk. And they might actually go with GTEC or maybe a combination of different ETFs in a retirement account or what have you. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell to get notifications. If you want to help me out, drop me a like and drop me a comment. That's going to help out the algo. Also check out Patreon, check out the links in the description for Motley Fool as well. I appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.